my loveliest natural health freaks. Welcome back to the Free Melon Society. I am Eli Martyr, your friendly neighborhood fruitarian. Hope you guys are all doing very, very, very well. So, as you know, the Game Changers movie just recently came out, uh, the Game Changers documentary. And it's one of the most well-produced, well-funded vegan documentaries out there. And it's a great film. It is a great documentary. I really enjoyed sitting through it. There's so many things that the documentary does correctly. It mentions the stark contrast between human physiology and carnivore physiology and omnivore physiology. And that there are absolutely no traces whatsoever of carnivore or omnivore physiology in the human body leading us to conclude that we are naturally plant eaters. It talks about the whole host of deadly neurotoxins and carcinogenic compounds that occur in the body and accumulate in the body when you decide to eat rotting dead carcasses. They explain how the main energy source in the human body is carbohydrate, not protein, not fat. They show very clearly that vegans have better physiological health, better energy levels, blood flow, cardiovascular function, all are improved on a whole food plant-based diet. They show how a plant-based diet will heal conditions and will heal disease associated with incorrect forms of eating. It talks about how the promotion of a meat-based diet is largely marketing and not based in any sort of factual information about the requirements of the human body. And they also talk about the outrageous environmental impacts of maintaining a meat-based culture. The amount of waste and pollution that we generate by sustaining this culture of animal slavery solely for the purpose of satisfying our adulterated human tastes is beyond measure. We have no right to do this. It's not necessary. It's not natural. And if we're to make any progress in human evolution, it, we need to start somewhere. So those are just some of the many, many things that the, that the film does right. I highly suggest you go watch it. It's, it's a great documentary. You'll, you'll probably learn some things if you're not uh, already familiar with the, with the subject. There are some problems with the film, though, that I felt were necessary for me to bring to your attention. Now, as much as I understand, I understand exactly what the film is trying to do. Because we are in a situation in the world right now where we're meat culture is still very much a thing. People don't understand the requisites for health. People don't understand proper natural eating. And so we're, we're lost, bamboozled by the corporate cultural commodity approach to, to eating. And so what the film is trying to do is it's trying to change the choices that we make without correcting the actual adulterated tastes. It's, it, 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 it's a bit frustrating. The film is still subtly suggesting that when you go plant-based, you are going to be missing out on meat and on the wonderful taste of meat, okay? And so it, 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 it's, it's, it just constantly suggests this. And it does this by, by promoting and promulgating vegan foods that taste like meat. And so you have to understand, really, when you think about it, does that change anything about the fundamental error of thinking? Not really. It's still training you to believe that food is that which tastes like meat product. And of course, the problem, again, with this is that meat product is a commoditized industry uh, thing. It, it, nobody likes the taste of actual raw meat like a, a real carnivore would. It's only meat product that has been sanitized, heated, cooked, treated with oils and spices and all things that are derived from plant products to begin with. So what we're doing when we take a hunk of dead carcass is we have to disguise the taste of the carcass so we make it taste as much like plants as possible, <laughs> right? So the film does not do anything to break the idea that meat products are tasty and good and that everyone loves them. So it just translates that sickness into the plant-based world. So the underlying problem is not addressed. It also promotes foods that are highly established commodities already, okay? Food commodity products that have little to do with human health and are totally unnecessary in terms of optimal human function. So 
First, we have to define what do we mean by processed food. This is the definition of processed food. It has to be mass produced has to be consistent batch to batch. It has to be consistent country to country so that the experience is the same wherever you go. It is specialized ingredients from specialized companies. Virtually all the macronutrients have to be pre-frozen in order to be able to withstand uh, long uh, flights and uh, shipping. You can sell it forever. It becomes a commodity. That's the definition of Commodity is storable food. And when we went from food to commodity, that's where things changed for just that reason. Things like wheat products, soy products, flour-based products, okay? Any, anything that's a flour is, is what I like to call nutritional nonsense. It's nonsense. You don't need any flour products. Uh, processed milk products. So any of those, you know, vegan milks and whatnot. You, you, Nobody needs any of these. These are not, these are not health products, but the film focuses, uh, heavily on these and focuses very, very little on, I don't think the word fruit is actually mentioned once in the film, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, they, there's a couple of clips of people eating, you know, fruit and simple vegetables and whatnot, but it's not the focus. Okay. The, the focus of this film is veganized, highly commoditized, man-made refined products okay the film doesn't really want to change much in terms of the already established massive wheat and soy and corn and canola uh, plants and processors and companies and whatnot now firstly let's not lose sight of the fact that the, the documentary is directed by james cameron himself right it's got a very 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 high production value and that's not to say that films with high production value are suspect you know all the time that, that's not my point but the thing is you, you have to remember um documentaries on netflix the <laughs> the odds that you are going to find documentaries on netflix that are not in bed with the establishment and the and the um, and the incentive to drive cultural ideologies that benefit the the few at the top. All right, it, it, Netflix is massive mainstream media. Okay, it's no different than than TV than regular TV. So documentaries that you find on Netflix, they're the chances that you're going to be slightly misled is extremely high whenever you watch Netflix documentaries, okay? There are only a couple, like, very few exceptions that I've seen um, with Netflix in the, in the documentary department. But most of the time, you know, you're going to get information and it'll be a mixed bag of good information and misleading information. That's pretty standard with any Netflix documentary. Okay, so let's check out a couple of clips from the film so you can see what I mean when I tell you that they, they kind of just, they don't really do anything to break the paradigm of meat addiction, okay? And, they, and they're promoting man-made refined products as a staple for veganism. More than enough protein to build and maintain muscle. For example, one cup of cooked lentils or a peanut butter sandwich. Has about as much protein as three ounces of beef or three large eggs. There's a section where a doctor is trying to show some athletes the difference between a meat-based meal and a plant-based meal and how it affects their blood composition. And so, and it's great. It's it's really really great. He shows them their blood after the meat-based meal, and it's thick and cloudy with fat, with fat running through the blood. It's 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 very very um uh, very compelling. And then he shows them their blood after the plant-based meal. And the blood is much more, much cleaner. Now, what is the type of food that they choose to represent the plant-based approach? It's a burrito, all right? And it's the same thing with the meat version of the meal. It's a, it's a meat burrito and a veggie burrito. Now, of course, the similarity between these two meals is a highly refined flour-based wheat product, okay? The, the, the wrap. It's not the healthiest thing in the world for you. Now, I do understand that they needed, for empirical purposes, to be uh, consistent between one meal and the other. Like, they're trying to isolate what exactly is the difference between 
one type of thing against another. So, so that's why if it was a wrap with the meat version, it had to be a wrap with the veggie version so that they could analyze the difference. And I get it. I totally get it. Um, but wouldn't it, wouldn't it be interesting to see the difference between unhealthy flour and wheat products and a meal of pears or something simple, like an actual, actual human food, right? That would be something of interest. There's another section in the film where, again, we, we are doing these comparisons between meat and plant-based products. And again, the food of choice involves largely man-made flour products, right? Wheat, like burritos and wraps and whatnot. These are not the healthiest things to be eating. They are artificial refined products that big industry is responsible for producing. And so this, this documentary, it doesn't, uh, the documentary does not threaten the already established industries of food production that are not necessarily helping us in terms of human health and wellness. It's the same game that's always played. You know, the more things change, the more they stay the same. You know, I, I love to eat. In the beginning, I was like, I got to psych myself out to say I don't care about flavor anymore. It wasn't really a sacrifice. She was still cooking, you know, mac and cheese and chicken wings, just plant-based. It's taking that love that you have for food and just changing it over to better ingredients. It's taking that love that you have for food and just changing it over to better ingredients. Here's this lady telling us that we want to not change the tastes that we love. That is a huge error in thinking, right? These are not the tastes that we love. We're not even carnivores. We're not even omnivores. How could we love the taste of a food that's not designed for our bodies? It's meat product that people think that they love. And so what's the message here? We have to take our adulterated senses, right? Not change anything about that and simply change the choice that we make, right? So now we're eating highly refined, you know, ultra processed, man-made industrial nonsense, right? And that is the meal of choice, not meat. Either way, you're being lied to nutritionally. I mean, look at these meal, look at these choices. These are essentially all meat mimickers. I mean, look at this, look at what we're promoting as wonderful plant-based meals. Mac and cheese, just industry chemical nonsense designed to make your food taste like cheese. Vegan chicken and vegan turkeys and vegan, what, like, this is just, this is just industry chemical nonsense, you know? Industry products that are designed to not change anything about the adulterated tastes that you already have from a bad diet. Was to become a better player. Players started looking over like, okay, that smells good. They were like, whatever you send, Derek, send me. And I was like, all right, good. Plant-based burgers. Oh no. Grill up, smell, tastes like beef, tastes like beef, tastes like beef. And oh no. And I'm making truffle mac and cheese. <laughs> Buffalo wings. Oh no! Kale, Caesar salad, crispy Brussels sprouts with a smoked sauce reduction. And we'll finish off with the peanut butter cheesecake. <laughs> okay, well, let's, let's take a look at their website. Okay, so here we've got the home page, right? Um, what about if we go to uh, the bigger picture? So look at this, we got shifting away from meat-based diets. Okay, our food choices play a significant role in the biggest environmental challenges over time. Da, 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 da. And then we've got a huge picture of lasagna, right? So what, what can we see in the, We've got meat replacer-like substance or whatever, whatever that stuff is in the lasagna. And then of course you've got flour products. The thing's obviously drowned in oil. I mean, look at it. So right away, you've got oil, you've got heavy oil use, you've got heavy salt use, and you've got the chemicals that are necessary to make plant food taste like meat product. Again, I have to stress meat product, not meat itself. This is not exactly healthy. Okay. 
Uh, let's go to, we go to core principles, animals versus plants, okay, and th th this site has lots of good information, to tons of good information here, I'm, my point is not to dissuade you from enjoying and liking this film and learning off of it, because you will, you'll learn lots of great stuff, but, you know, uh, the preponderance of scientific evidence for the animal-based diet, uh, food, uh, meat uh, decreases in overall health, increases the risk of numerous diseases, yes, this is all good information, whole versus refined. Refined foods can also include added ingredients such as preservatives found in processed meats or artificial flavors found in candy, right? So they go on to talk about the difference between whole versus refined foods. And then right under that, we have a refined food. <laughs> we have, again, flour products, wheat products, wheat products that clearly are doused with oil. Okay, we can go to, uh, let's see, we go to the recipes, and boom, right off the bat, we have pancakes, vegan pancakes, okay? Again, not meat-based, right? So, if you're transitioning from a meat diet to, um, to a plant-based diet, you know, even with the cooked plants and the cooked grains and starches and flour products and whatnot, you're still going to be getting healthier, right? You're still going to be getting better because you're moving away from something that's worse and going to something that's not as damaging. So your body will respond and you'll be able to, yes, get better to an extent. Look at these recipes. Number one, cinnamon rolls. Cinnamon rolls. Sweet Dijon vinaigrette, simple baked tofu. Again, you know, more processed food, processed soybeans, smashed potato nachos. I mean, I mean, how long is it going to take you to prepare this? Right? It's, it's just, this is not, we're not shifting to our more natural diet. We're shifting to a, a diet that's just as processed, just as refined. It's just that it's not meat based. It's not animal based, which is a good thing, which is a step in the right direction. But we might as well consider the, the optimal health of our own bodies and care for our own body, we might as well take this under consideration as well as consideration for animals. Baked tofu, butternut, and harissa mayo. What's mayonnaise? Mayonnaise is a, is a dairy product, so we're just finding ways to replace dairy with food that's not good for you. Uh, we got cookies, cookies, and a big glass of milk in the background. Tempeh bacon, again, suggesting that bacon is something that we all must love. And if you're not eating bacon, well, when you go to the plant-based diet, you've got to eat something that tastes exactly like bacon, otherwise you are missing out. Okay, the documentary is great. There is loads of information in the documentary that is very compelling, that will help to transition one from a meat-based diet to a plant-based diet. This is a good thing. At the very least, aligns us with some shred of higher morality, where we are not making the choices to support an industry of slaughter and slavery for our own adulterated tastes and practices. Okay, so at the very least, this documentary is doing exactly that. What I would ask is that when you watch this documentary, approach it with a better perspective of human nutrition. Okay, because if you follow the guidelines of what is being suggested in this video, you're still going to be eating food that is largely unhealthy. This documentary does not threaten the already established giants of food and agricultural production. Take soy processing, for example. Now, when soy is processed, what do you think happens to the extract, the soy extract? that is not used in the in the um, uh, in the making of tofu or tempeh or or whatever it is it's sold to the animal industry for animal feed so pro by promoting these heavy heavy soy products in the form of milks and and tofu and tempeh and all these soy products that you can use to fashion all sorts of food like products right we're still enabling the animal industry because by buying those products right they sell off all of their unused soy riffraff for animal feed. What makes better change, not only for your health, but for the world at large, is to eat in a way that is in alignment with actual human physiology and actual optimal human nutrition. Simple fruits, 
simple vegetables if if desired and simple nuts no need for recipe you don't need recipes you don't need to be spending hours in the kitchen like this like the menus and the recipes in this documentary in this uh, website are kind of suggesting that you should do if you want to switch to an enjoyable plant-based diet anyway that's my little spiel on the game changers again you know go check it out it's a great film but do not forget that this is not a human diet um cooked foods heavily seasoned foods oils refined products refined milk products refined grain products no, none of this is human food and this documentary is putting that forth as the main source of a plant-based diet and that is absolutely not true Thank you very much for watching, guys. Subscribe to the Free Melon Society. Go check out other videos on this channel if you are new to this and you're unfamiliar with proper human diet and what exactly it is. Leave a comment if you've got something that you wish to share with us. But until next time, guys, thank you very much. I'm Eli Martyr, and we'll see you next time on the Free Melon Society.